running across the street and I heard a gunshot and I looked up, I seen a whole bunch of smoke and I seen a guy in full army fatigue just shooting, going from left to right, left to right, just shooting people. That's Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis, believe it or not, actually spoke with the Buffalo shooter the day before the shooting for about an hour and 45 minutes. You told me just a few moments ago that you actually spoke with the suspect yesterday. He was here. Tell me more about that. Um, I seen him and he looked strange in the neighborhood, but he had a genius shirt on. So I wanted to see if he was a genius. And we sat and talked about stream theory, critical race theory, uh, the beginning of civilization. And even to the point where I think he actually offered to buy him a drink of sorts. Um, they hugged it out and then they went their separate ways. And then, of course, the next day, this lunatic goes and does this. Now, here's the reason why I'm pointing this out. This is also Mr. Lewis after being interviewed by Fox. Because after the security guard got shot, he got a gun shooting people still. If people, more people were armed and knew what they were doing with the gun, because it's not the gun, it's the person with the gun that don't know how to act. This is not the gun, it's the person with the gun that don't know how to act. That clip isn't exactly easy to find. And I want you to ask yourself this question. If Mr. Lewis had gotten up on there and said something to the effects of, yeah, I spoke with him the day before, we had a great conversation, but after that, he went and did this, and I think that's why we should have more gun control laws in this country. That's why I don't think people should be allowed to have AR-15s. This is why I don't think people should be allowed to have quote-unquote high-capacity magazines. Do you think that clip would be hard to find on the internet? I assure you it would not be. It would not be hard at all. And the reason why is because it flies against the narrative that's being pushed by the vast majority of our mainstream media. However, you have an individual who actually spoke with the shooter and then actually witnessed the shooting by and large and then comes back and tells you on the ground what reality is. And that's just it. There's a lot of disconnect with respect to reality. You make all the laws you want. It doesn't matter because people who are dead set on killing people are going to get what they need to do it. In 2016, a man in Nice, France, got a truck and killed 81 people with the truck. You want to guess what stopped him? People with guns. So it, it, he speaks the absolute truth. You can't do anything if in the moment you don't have what you need to protect yourself. Take the security guard, for instance. That particular security guard was under gun in that situation. And I've seen some comments from people on Twitter saying things like, well, cops shouldn't have to face people with AR-15s. I shouldn't have to face people with AR-15s. Those people in that store shouldn't have to face people, to face people with AR-15s. But most importantly, those people in the store, people like me and everybody else in society, shouldn't be forced to have to fight back against people with firearms with our hands. And we all know that the gun laws in New York are incredibly strict. The guy went there knowing this. So much so, he even accounted for it, for the fact that the possibility of him being engaged by somebody with a firearm was relatively low, especially somebody who, in his mind, had more than 10 rounds in his magazine, because in New York, you can't have more than 10 rounds. Here's the horrible irony behind the whole gun laws in New York, or the strict gun laws in New York. You see, I'm pretty sure in that neighborhood, that neighborhood was essentially in the hood, and there's a large black population in that area and i think people have a misconception that people in the hood the vast majority of them are criminals or street dudes which is not the case at all it's actually the inverse the 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 criminal element in the inner cities or in our hoods actually make up for the minority of the people in the area yes now the majority of criminals tend to conjugate and live in the hood but they still make up the minority of people who actually live there and so I bet so it begs the question, you create laws for the minority of people who still have the guns in the first place, but you create gun laws that take away the guns from the good people who live in these areas. You see, those people that fought, who live in those areas, who actually who follow the law, who work hard and do the things the right way. Guess what that means? That means that they are largely unarmed because they were following these stupid gun laws. You know, the people who are not unarmed, the criminals who don't follow these laws. And also, these lunatics who go and mass shoot grocery stores. He broke the law. There was a law that says you can't do that. He broke it. And when he broke it, 
There was no one there to stop him because the people who were there to stop him were following the law. That's how sick gun control is. As I said before, gun control does not make you safer, it just makes you a victim. At the end of the day, for people who live in these types of areas, or people who just live in this country in general, who follow the law and are good people and do the right things, we shouldn't have to worry or flirt with the idea of being criminals because we want to protect ourselves. You know how many people I know who say when we talk about or bring up the issue of uh, gun free zones, how many people I know who say, well, if it's concealed, it's concealed. If nobody sees it, nobody knows. And I'm not arguing against that. However, if they are caught now, they are subject to the ramifications of the law. Why should I, as a good person who's just going about my life and just wants to be able to protect myself, have to worry or flirt with becoming a criminal because I decided to exercise my constitutional right? I'm not going in there to shoot anybody. I'm not going in there to kill anybody. So why do I have to flirt with becoming a criminal because I want to protect myself under the Second Amendment? And that's what these gun control laws do. And pe a lot of people who are pro-gun control don't seem to understand. Gun control only works if you live in, utopic society, in a utopic society. Gun control only works if everybody decides to follow the law. Gun control only works is if you can have a police officer immediately when you need them. That's the only way gun control works. Because outside of that, the only person you can depend upon is you in that moment. You don't have any other options. You don't, you, don't have a, you don't have a guardian angel watching over you the moment something like this happens. You don't. You have to fight and fend for yourself. That's why people were running out of the grocery store. That's why there were people hiding in, 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 in refrigerators and hiding in, in ice boxes and hiding behind registers and so forth and so on. Doing everything in their power to protect themselves from being shot by this lunatic. And so you have to ask yourself this question, how much of a different situation would it have been if you had multiple people there with firearms? And I hear people talk about this all the time saying, oh, well, if there are more people there with guns there, there will be there'll be more shootings. There's already a shooting. So what is the alternative? You'd rather have these you rather have this psychopath have free reign and just be able to shoot people at will versus having people there shooting back at him. It's already a shootout. Why are you worried about a shootout when it's already happening? At least make it even. People are already behind the eight ball. There was a woman who talked about the fact that she was inside. And the only reason she even knew that the gunman was about to come into the grocery store was because the security guard got up, pulled his gun, and started heading outside. And the security guard, he, sa he saved us. He perished, but he saved us if we didn't see him. Nobody see him moved. React. Yes, when we saw him reacting to something, we knew it was coming in. That's how we knew it was it was us that was being hit. That's the only reason she knew. By and large, we are always going to be behind the eight ball as citizens when it comes to protecting ourselves because we are reacting. This this fool had months to plan this out. He went there the day before to scout it. He counted the number of security guards, the people there, all of those things. He got chance. He had the ability to plan it all out. Yet, when you and I are out and about, we're at the grocery store and we're looking for milk and eggs, we have to react to somebody who's had months to plan. So a bare minimum, let me have the tool that allows me to instantly react effectively. Not just react, but react effectively to somebody coming in and doing something like that. At the end of the day, stop the so over-focus and hyper-focus on the firearm is ridiculous. Because it is the individual who makes a decision to do something with a firearm. And it's our responsibility to whenever that happens and somebody decides to do something bad with the firearm against us or people that we love or care for or people that we just want to protect, it is our ability to put it down instantly that will allow us to be able to live safely in this world. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.